I live in Riverside now. I've been here 37 years, but I come from Grand Junction, Colorado, a little town out in the west. I stopped believing in war um, consciously, I think, around the time of the Vietnam War, when my husband at that time was drafted into the war. But going back a little further, I think that maybe I never really believed in war, even though I was a war child. I was born in 1942 during the Second World War. But of course, I didn't know too much about that at the time. But a bigger influence on me was my religion and um, the family that I grew up in, which was very peaceful, very compassionate to other human beings. And I think that you know, that's the basis of, of nonviolence and not going to war, trying to solve problems other ways. My life was very interesting. I was the youngest of three children, and my brothers and my brother and sister were quite a bit older. And I spent a lot of time with my father, who was a veterinarian and went out on calls to the farms. And I noticed how he treated the people on the farms. The farmer would come out, and his wife would come out, and for example, he would say, this is the wife, and my dad would say to her, but what is your name, and what are the names of the children, and he would get involved, and I think that's one of the reasons I um, feel so strongly that each person is valuable. We lived a couple of blocks from the railroad tracks, and when I was born, it was at the end of the Depression in the 40s, and there were people without jobs riding the railroad track, the trains, who came to our house for something to eat and for a job. And my mother always gave them something. Always there was a sandwich and a cup of coffee. And she talked about the people as if they were true, valuable individuals. And uh, that was a big lesson. I retired in 2003, which is four years ago, and I was wondering, what am I going to do with my time now? I, I didn't understand the concept of being retired because I wasn't tired in the first place, but <clears throat> I decided that I wanted to keep doing something vital in the world. And um, when I was a teacher, I taught psychology and personal growth, and those subjects were related to this really too, because they were about how to find peace within yourself, how to get along with people, how to live in the world, and I think this is kind of a continuation of that. Um, and so then around, after I retired then, around that time, the Iraq war was starting and I was just appalled that this country that I believed in so much and loved so much would actually start a war uh, even though it was couched in other language and um, I just couldn't handle that so I started participating in demonstrations against the war and there I met uh, Linda Dunn from the uh, Fellowship of Reconciliation and I said I want to work in this area um, I knew if I went to the Quakers, I would find people working for peace because they have always done that, and that was right. And I got involved in the Fellowship of Reconciliation and the Nonviolent Peace Force through her and have been doing that work for the last few years. I've been involved in peace work for many, many years for many reasons I think individuals can make a difference if they speak up and if we get together as a group we can be much more effective. The group that I'd like to talk about today is called Fellowship of Reconciliation and we have a chapter here in Riverside and that uh, group is an international group that's been around 90 years that basically believes and acts upon the belief that nonviolence is more powerful than violence to solve the problems of the world. 
Uh, what influenced me in this work, I think, really goes back to my family. I was raised in a, a large um, Bohemian Polish family in uh, Cleveland, Ohio area, and um, I was raised Catholic, and that was a, a permeated our lives. It was a very big part of our lives. And I think that the teachings of um, that religion, um, which was full of um, compassionate care for human beings, um, and that's how my family lived also, uh, that is the biggest influence on me. And I think that uh, that's, that's just um, followed me into my adulthood. Um, they really go hand in hand. I care about both of those issues. Um, and do things in my own life um, related to um, the environment and global warming. But I think more of my passion is in the peace movement, because, particularly because it seems the world that we live in now, I'm surrounded by issues of violence, much more so than when I was a child. Um, I turn on the TV and I, I can have it on for two seconds and switching the channels and somebody's going to get shot right in front of me. Uh, the news is full of violence, we're in a war, I mean, it's just everywhere. So it's like such an up issue, uh, you know, such a, um, it seems to permeate everything. And so I really want to work to sort of burst a hole in that a little bit and, you know, remind people there are other ways. In fact, most of us, you know, do live nonviolently with each other and we just don't notice it because it's such a natural part of us to practice nonviolence. And I think we can expand that to the larger issues in our world. And I just want to be um, a person that reminds everyone about that. Okay. Well, as I said, I've been involved for a long time. The change in my life came about during the Vietnam War when I learned from a professor in Oregon at a night class that he held, volunteered to hold, about Vietnam, about the history, about how the United States got involved. And I began to realize I needed to know for myself the facts of the kinds of things that our government was in at that time. And still, we need to be aware of what's going in on, our, in, on in our country and be involved and, and make sure that what's being done in our name is right. And I don't think war is right. Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Um, yeah, I think there's a great opportunity for high school students to become involved in working with nonviolence and peace. I know that already at some high schools, uh, clubs exist, like at Poly High School in Riverside, we have Stop the Violence. Um, and a couple of years ago, when our organization, the Fellowship of Reconciliation, we brought a speaker to uh, Poly and North, RCC and UCR, from the Nonviolent Peace Force, um, Hindolo Pakawa. And as a result of his visit, some kids at Poly High School actually started a club called the Nonviolent Peace Force. So I think once um, high school students become aware of these possibilities, the sky's the limit. I was just amazed that they started that club. So I think it's important for our organization to keep reaching out to um, high school, middle school, elementary school kids. In fact, we are going to start teaching non, uh, a nonviolence class, how to solve problems nonviolently. And we'll, we're not sure where our venues will be yet, but you know, I think once students become aware of these ideas, then they can just start practicing them and spreading them around the way they do so beautifully.